What's good, y'all? It's KJ here with the Urban Fruit Forest. I'm over here at my dog Vince's house with the Oyster Boys. You guys may be wondering what's on my hands right here. They're called Vogs, Vertical Oyster Gardens. I'm gonna go ahead and let Vince take it away, go ahead and explain to you guys what they have going on here. So you got it, Vince. All right, so Vertical Oyster Garden, it ain't much to it. It's 20 old uh, oyster shells that we get from restaurants. We recycle them, starts on your plate. We take them off your hands and then we drill a hole through them and stack them on coconut fiber rope. And then from there, we deploy them into our local waterways, hang them up for res residential docks, public spaces, whoever will take them. All right, so can you go ahead and explain to them the, the benefits, the reason you guys are dumping them out into the oceans right now? Yeah, so uh, in the past 100 years, about 90% of our oyster population has been depleted. So that means that oysters have no place to land anymore. They need a hard substrate to land. And the way that oysters reproduce is the male and female release their seed into the water. It mixes, creating a larvae that floats through the water column, looking for that hard substrate. And since we've done so much harvesting and dredging and, and built seawalls all along our coastlines, they got nowhere to stick. So when you add a log to the water, it allows them a home. We kind of think of them as oyster condos, kind of think of it as affordable living. Anybody could stay there. And it's not only for oysters. We found uh, many different crabs, shrimps, barnacles, mussels, uh, corals, worms, fish, and it basically creates a little estuary within itself. And at the same time, its main purpose is to filter water. One adult oyster can filter 50 gallons of water every day. So if you think about it, we uh, had one that was studied after about six months and it had 176 oysters. So if you do the math, that's a lot of damn water being filtered. And that's after about six months. We have some that are about a year old that has a lot more growth. So you really just put it in the water and let it do its thing. Okay, so like, for example, let's say if somebody out there wanted to go ahead and get a VOG set up with, I'm, I'm assuming certain locations, probably it works certain locations by. So for example, I stay near a lake, would it work setting it up there in a yeah, lake? It wouldn't work in a lake because you need salinity. So you need a little bit of salt. You gotta be either in a canal or in salt water, intercoastal waves, on the Gulf. But this can work all throughout Florida, Alabama, up in New York. Anywhere that has a little bit of salt in the water, you should be good. You heard them. So any of those locations, if you got salt water near you, could get VOG set up. Uh, we're about to dig in. I'm gonna have them break these down and show you guys how we make it step by step. So let's get started. All right, so this is a drill press. This is what we use to drill the holes through the shells. Ain't much to it, you lay it down and it'll drill right through. All right, next step is take your drilled oyster shell, feed it through your coconut fiber rope. The reason we use coconut fiber is because it's saltwater resistant and it's 100% organic. So this whole thing is gonna be 100% organic. And then ain't nothing to it, but just keep stacking them up. And then once you get to 20 shells, that's all there is to it and then you're gonna be done. And then I'm gonna stack them up and then show them the finished product. Yeah. I'm gonna just have them speed through this spot. Is there a certain length that you use for the, or it's pretty much just however t tall your dock is to the water? Uh, we kind of make them universally, okay. about four to five feet. And then depending on the dock length, how far the, we have, a couple different ways we do it. We can either do a two by four board, which is connected from pylon to pylon. Okay. Or we can do it straight onto the dock. If you have uh, some slits in your dock, we could feed it right through. And then we place an oyster on top, you tie a little knot, and then think of this as the board and it serves as the anchor. Okay. So it'll basically be hanging from the dock just like this. Okay, that makes sense. Does the tide play a factor into it or not really since it's universal? Uh, the tide? Yeah, whether it's high or low. Uh, yeah, we kind of measure it to be, they don't want to be too far out during low tide. They can live out of the water, but we like to keep them in just so they can be thriving their whole, okay. their whole day. But if it comes to a low tide, they'll be straight for a couple hours. All right. All right, so right here, now we have the finished product. Yes, sir. Now we're going to go ahead and show you guys what the finished product looks like under a dock. We got some vlogs set up down here. Let's take a closer look. D 
think we might be able to see some oysters in them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring it over to that. Uh, he went ahead and got it out of the water for us. This is one that fell off. This is a grown oyster right here. So this is well and alive, right? This is an oyster. Yep, he's alive. And you can see him. These are all grown, growing oysters. So something like this, how much water do you think something like this would filter if you just throw a ballpark number out? This probably, Some quick math. It's about 13,000 gallons of water a day. Y'all heard that? This VOG right here filters 13,000 gallons of water a day. So how many of you guys have set up out here? Uh, we got about 60 of them out 60 here. 60 right of them. Now. So uh, y'all do the math. That's a good amount of water that's getting filtered. You see, look mm -hmm. at all that life that's in them. Creates homes for crabs, shrimps, small fish. You can see all the. If I pick this up, you'll see all the crabs scurrying off. There's a little guy right there. Little buddy's chilling right here. So, like he says, habitat for a whole bunch of life. It's not just oysters, a whole bunch of wildlife. Look at that boy right there. He's in there just chilling. All right, this is the dead one. These right here are called skillet fish. The small fish that live inside of them. You can see crabs running around. Different types of crabs, stone crabs, flathead crabs. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of crabs. Different shrimps, mussels. So pretty much before y'all put this into the water, it looked like what you just showed us before you left your spot, right? Exactly, a little muscle. Yeah, they start off just as... Y'all saw how bare it looked and now look at it. Yep, full of life. Filtering water, giving small things a home. And when those small things are here, like shrimp and crabs, that brings the, the bigger fish. I've noticed a lot of snook showing up, uh -huh. a lot of sheep's head, because that's their main thing that they like to eat. All right, y'all, that pretty much sums up the video. We went ahead and showed you guys how to make a VOG, a, a vertical oyster garden. We went ahead and talked about the things that they do, all the benefits of them. Vince went ahead and pulled on down and showed you guys all the life that's brought into it. So I really appreciate you guys tapping into this video. If you really like what you saw, go ahead over to oysterboys.com. They also on Instagram. I'm not sure they might be on Facebook too, but I have all their handles down in the description. If you like this video, go ahead and like it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.